go, Saucony Mad River TR, full review. We now have 60 miles in the shoe, or 97 kilometers. Uh, pretty much a shocker of a trail running shoe in 2019. I didn't see this coming, and I am pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. But before I give you my thoughts, let's dive into a few specs real quick. Here we go, four millimeter drop in the Saucony Mad River TR, so lower on the scale. We're looking at 23 millimeter stack height in the heel, 19 in the forefoot, so definitely it's not in the maximalist category. It's not like the Hoka uh, EVO Speed Goat. It's more on the minimalist side. Not Sorry, not minimalist, but it's got a middle of the road for a trail running shoe. In my size in the Saucony Matter River, we're looking at 9.7 ounces or 276 grams. There it is on your screen. And in men's size nine, we're looking at 10.9 ounces or 309 grams. So on the weight scale, it's definitely a little heavier, uh, but I think, and let's just dive into it, I think it, it's happening because of the upper. And let me just say, this upper is pretty impressive. A lot going on here. Let's start with the eyelet chain. First of all, I've never really seen this before in an eyelet chain, and this is the eyelet chain where the laces go right up the middle of the shoe there. You can choose which eyelet chain to use. So I don't, I, hopefully you can see that there, but I have gone with the inner chain, but then if you want a little more of a wraparound feel, a little more of, I would say, a little more of a lockdown feel, uh, you can use this outer eyelet chain. I've also seen examples where people use both. So they alternate as the laces go up the shoe um, with this eyelet chain. I think that's neat. So you can really, really dial in how the, how the shoe locks over the top of your foot uh, right through that midfoot section. Also, gusseted tongue area. Um, and I say area because it's a little unique. It's, um, it's kind of back to, and it's becoming more popular. I've noticed a lot in 2019, a little bit of that booty, collar feel so a lot of good cushion around the collar which wraps around the ankle uh, but it's one piece of material that's where that gusseted comes in so it, you're not gonna you know if I go back and forth sometimes as far as whether the tongue of the shoe and that this is the tongue of the shoe whether it should be separated from the from the rem from the rest of the shoe or whether it should be gusseted to it meaning connected to the rest of the shoe because if it's gusseted, your ability to move the tongue around is limited. But a lot of times, it, for me, it falls into place nicely. However, if you like to move your tongue around, I would say a little more old school feel where you kind of move that tongue around the top of your foot until you find the exact spot you like, um, the gusseted feel, the gusseted construction may not be for you through that upper. So. Saucony, I would say good work on the upper in the Saucony Mad River TR. For the midsole, all right, so it's a power foam midsole. Again, with that 23 and 19 stack heights, I'm a little shocked at how comfortable, comfortable the shoe is and how much it's protecting my feet out on the trails despite not having a crazy tall stack height. And, you, and I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. Why is the stack height pretty low, which means that ground contact feel is definitely there. But, and then I, I was just thinking, what's going on, what's going on? Boom, the insole. Saucony, amazing. And I said this in the first impression video as well. The insole is amazing. You, I can tell they put a lot of thought behind the midsole. A lot of nice, good, not too much, but just enough cushion so you don't feel like your foot is riding on a plank inside the shoe. Um, in a, I should just say, why is it called Mad River? This shoe is designed to run through creeks and streams and rivers. Um, now, if you live in an area that gets a lot of rain or a lot of water, um, in Colorado, I haven't been able to try this yet, but you can see in the insole there, there's some, uh, there's some holes. That's for drainage, so water that gets inside the shoe will drain out. And yes, I'm just gonna say it now, you can actually, they're actually advising that you do this. You can take a, a drill and a little drill bit and drill into the bottom of the shoe. There's a one, one, two, three, looks like three holes are recommended, maybe four uh, where you can drill in so that the water 
can drain out through the insole and then actually out of the bottom of the shoe. There, there, there's actually a video online on how to do this. I haven't done it yet because in Colorado, we don't live in a very, we live in a very arid climate, but that is where the Mad River comes in. I think it's a, again, Saucony kind of pushing the ball forward in the innovation department. Um, outsole, let's just say, okay, well, I just talked about it. You can drill the holes in the bottom. Okay, <laughs> real quick, the reverse traction on, I went on some crazy steep downhills in the 14ers of Colorado in the shoe. Uh, see this outs this um, this outsole pattern, the traction pattern. It's reversed here on the uh, below the heel, so you can get some really good braking going on on steep downhill sections. Uh, whereas on the under the forefoot, it's designed for it's almost like the barb that is on a fishing hook. So the barb is going a certain direction. So once the once the fish bites the barb, um, it gets hooked. And then, you know, you got the fish. Uh, same uh, in the heel area of this Saucony Mad River TR, the, the barb of the, the lug is going the opposite direction of the direction you are traveling down the mountain, and therefore you get that hook and that catch so you're not slipping down the mountain. Does that make sense? Saucony, amazing. I just love this traction pattern, this lug pattern on the outsole of the Mad River TR. For fit and comfort, fit, true to size, I will say, I think the toe box is, is wide. A little wider than some other shoes, definitely wider than let's say Hoka or Solomon. And so if you have a wide uh, forefoot or toe box area for, for your foot, um, I think this will work for you. And um, actually, yeah, it's a wide, I think it's, a, it's more on the wider side based on some other trail shoes of 2019 for comfort. Again, that collar around the ankle, it's pretty amazing. The upper, no issues with blisters or rubbing or the heel counter. So this is the heel counter back here. Um, pretty good padding. It's just comfortable. There's no other way to say it. It's comfortable. And uh, you know, the ride is comfortable, not crazy cushion. Um, I don't know if I go out and run, you know, 20 plus miles on the trails in this shoe. I wasn't able to do that. The furthest run I did was I 14. Um, so I don't know if it's like a long, long distance trail shoe, but for the distances I took it out, the, the ride was spot on. For the positive and drawback of the Mad River TR, for the positive, innovation. Now, maybe it's too much innovation in one shoe. I think everything from the lug pattern to drilling holes in the bottom of the shoe for, for water drainage to, um, to the eyelet chain. I just love pushing the boundaries. I think it's really neat Saucony. Can't wait for next year's iteration, frankly, in 2020. For the drawback, I think I would maybe, uh, maybe not. I, I, I'm going back and forth on it, but I think maybe, maybe a little more rubber overlay through the toe box. It's already started, but I think just maybe another half an inch, maybe an inch over the toe box for a little more water protection. I did notice like when I wasn't going through creeks, um, like really uh, immersing my foot all the way in the creek, and I was just um, splashing a little bit, that water was getting in through this toe box right there. So I think um, just a little more rubber overlay through that toe box for not, not the creek crossings, because you're gonna get wet, but just the splashing that might happen. Um, just something that came to mind as I was out there on the mountains in the 14ers. And how will I use this shoe moving forward? No doubt. So you know what I'm gonna put it in the same kind of category as? If you're a fan of the Nike Wild Horse 5, this actually has a similar feel, a similar upper, a similar ride, and a similar lug pattern so that you could use this shoe as a commuter. So you could use it on pavement and concrete to commute to the trails. If you live in a condo or an apartment or a house that's like, you know, a 15 minute jog to get to the trails, you could absolutely use this on both surface, surfaces. And frankly, in the winter time, and it's turning into winter here in the US, um, in the snow, um, I think this would do great in the snow, especially with, um, I guess it'd be interesting to see how it would drain after going through some really slushy conditions like Chicago. Um, anyway, so that's how I will use the shoe moving forward. 
more as a commuter shoe. Nothing, like I said, no crazy long distances. And uh, yeah, not like, it's not like a big aggressive mountain shoe, even though I tested it up there. More of a commuter shoe for me. As far as the score, we're gonna go with eight out of 10. Not bad, not bad at all for me. And the price, stop it. And I said this in the first impression, stop it. I don't know what they're doing. $110. What are you doing, Saucony? I don't even know. I hope you're not losing money on this shoe at $110. I would pay $125, $130 easily for the Saucony Mad River. And the price may have already dropped. I'm not sure. I haven't checked in a little bit. But that was when I bought it brand new two or three months ago. So maybe the price has already started to come down. Great work, Saucony, on the Mad River TR. Price point. Conclusion, I couldn't be happier. And again, I um, can't wait. I um, can't wait for the 2020 iteration of the Saucony Mad River TR. I'm just trying to brainstorm as I'm talking right now. Like, how could I use this shoe better in 2020 to really effectively get the full benefits of the drainage of the shoe? Uh, you know, again, I just have to seek out some wetter conditions here in Colorado. Ah, oh, I couldn't be more excited. Question of the day. Are you wearing, okay, two options. Have you ever worn Saucony? Yes or no? If yes, why do you, why are you like, why do you gravitate towards Saucony? Question number two, um, have you ever worn a trail shoe from Saucony? This is my first trail shoe from Saucony. I feel like Saucony's really dialed in in the road scene, but I haven't seen a ton of shoes from Saucony in the trail department. All right, there you have it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this full review of the Saucony Mad River TR. All right, there you have it. We're gonna toss it back to uh, the Saucony Fast Twitch uh, 8 full review. On the right, another Saucony shoe from 2019. And then on the left, we're gonna toss it back to all the running shoe full review playlist. Ton of, ton of uh, videos in there if you wanna dig further into the archive. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching as always. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.